And a uh, short time later, uh, a writer, a friend of mine called René Crevel, was a friend of the Dali, so he introduced me to them. And from then onwards, my wife and I, and I saw a lot of the Dali. They used to come and stay with my wife and me in the south of France. And one day, uh, Gala uh, said to me, uh, we have our financial position very difficult. We've got great uh, difficulty in making ends meet, and I don't want a daddy to commercialize himself. So if we could find a certain number of people who would uh, ensure, my idea would be that uh, 12 people each would ensure mens eventuality to uh, uh, to a daddy, and like that, we'd have no, we'd have no more difficulty, he could work quietly. And I found a certain amount of people. One was Emilio Terry, the architect, Another one was the Vicomte, Vicomte Vicomtesse de Noy, who to whom I introduced Dali, which was very um, beneficial to him because they bought a lot of his works and helped him a lot. And the others I don't quite remember anymore, but those were the main ones. We were 12. And the counterpart that every month we received either a painting or drawings that Dali or etching that Dali had made. And then we all met together for dinner on the 23rd of December, and that lasted till the war in the Dali studio and a picture was auctioned off after dinner and the one that's back of me uh, here is uh, one of those that I won at uh, at the Christmas at the Christmas auction we were to go to a moving picture with some friends and at the last moment I decided not to go gala would go with them and I would stay home and go to bed early we had topped off our meal with a very strong camembert and after everyone had gone, I remained for a long time, seated at the table, meditating on the philosophic problems of the super soft, which the cheese presented to my mind. I got up and went into my studio, where I lit the light in order to cast a final glance, as is my habit, at the picture I was in the midst of painting. This picture represented a landscape near Port Ligat, whose rocks were bathed in a transparent and melancholy twilight. In the foreground, an olive tree with its branches cut and without leaves. I knew that the atmosphere which I had succeeded in creating with this landscape was to serve as a setting for some idea, for some surprising image, but I did not in the least know what it was going to be. I was about to turn out the light when instantaneously I saw the solution. I saw three soft watches, one of them hanging lamentably on the branch of the olive tree. When Gala returned from the theatre, the picture was completed. I made her sit down in front of it with her eyes shut. One, two, three, open your eyes. I looked intently at Gala's face, and I saw upon it the unmistakable contraction of wonder and astonishment. I asked her, do you think that in three years you will have forgotten this image? No one can forget it once he has seen it, she said. Dali coined the term paranoia criticism to describe the method he developed of searching his subconscious for images. He claimed that these images were beyond his control, but the other surrealists were beginning to find some of his notions quite unacceptable. Mattis came to a head in 1934 when he painted The Enigma of William Tell, in which he savagely distorted the figure of Lenin. There was an incident at the uh, Salon d'Automne, I think, where Dali exhibited a painting uh, showing Lenin uh, in, uh, in a rather curious attitude with an enormous behind, uh, naked and uh, object on, the, on that uh, curious uh, part of his uh, flesh. And that was uh, extremely disparaging for the personality of Lenin, who was probably uh, uh, he, he might be criticized, but not in that, uh, in that uh, humor, humorous circus-like <laughs> way, you know. And uh, Dali was called to answer for uh, his painting, uh, things like that. At the Surrealist headquarters at 42 Rue Fontaine, Dali was put on trial. I was running a fever and getting a sore throat. I dressed very warmly, 
placed a thermometer under my tongue so as to keep vigilantly thinking about my case. Darley, what do you have to say for yourself? Breton was looking furious. The fact was that, having forgotten to take the thermometer out of my mouth, what I said was incomprehensible, and I was spitting all over him. I solemnly swore I was no enemy of the proletariat, about which, in fact, I don't give a fig. I had transformed the grotesque occasion into a true surrealist happening. The trial ended with Dali being formally expelled from the surrealist movement for his deviant political views. Dali dijo, Picasso es un español, yo también. Picasso es un genio, yo también. Picasso, yo también. Picasso es comunista, yo tampoco. Y entonces, yo ya en este momento me declaré apolítico totalmente, pero al mismo tiempo monárquico y anarquista pero no políticamente, metafísicamente. O sea que si de pronto al rey, nuestro rey que quiero tanto, hubiera un partido político para apoyarlo, tampoco quisiera yo nunca meterme en este partido. His controversial political attitudes isolated Dali from the mainstream of European intellectual thought, and eventually he openly declared his support for Franco. However, despite his split with Breton, his name had become publicly synonymous with surrealism, and he continued to insist that everything in the conscious and subconscious world was appropriate material for his work. I started to paint Premonition of Civil War, also known as soft construction with boiled beans, in which intermingled arms and legs choke each other, as it prophetically foretells the reciprocal killings in a Spain fascinated with the horror of self-destruction. The Spanish corpse was soon to let the world know what its guts smelled like. Knowing that out of this offal of disemboweled bodies and the ruins of its cities, Spain would one day rise again, returning to its traditional truth, its great male strength, and that I, the Catalan, would be there after this episode of revolutionary confusion to recall the existence of sacred values, I painted cannibalism of autumn while the fighting was going on at the gates of Madrid, and sleep which indicated the time necessary for the horror to be forgotten. He spent most of the Civil War in Paris, and in 1940, when the Germans invaded France, he left for America. The immense financial success that awaited him led Breton to name him Avida Dollars, a bitter anagram of Salvador Dali. What do you think that the method of paranoico crítico le aportó al surrealism? Al surrealismo nada, a mí todo. Además, cuando yo llegué a Nueva York y me pidieron una definición de qué es el surrealismo, Dalí dijo, el surrealismo soy yo. Y era verdad. En América, Dalí went out of his way to court publicity and he became a celebrity when his face appeared on the cover of Time magazine. Soon after, he was arrested for smashing the window of a Fifth Avenue department store, which had dared to alter the display he'd designed. The judge acquitted him of the offence, but as a parting shot, Dali wrote a pamphlet broadcasting the independence of the imagination and the rights of man to his own madness. The resulting publicity secured his notoriety. I always welcome Mr. and Mrs. A. Reynolds Morse, the founders of the Salvador Dali Museum, my fans. I look at them greedily. Since I first met them on my arrival in the U.S., they have devoted their entire fortune to the purchase of my pictures. They know all my work better than I and collect everything that I publish. I'm only sorry their example has not caught on better. A picture hangs a scene that is painted of life. A picture of pride and of passion, and a picture of peace and of strife. Over the years, we bought 95 paintings, and just quite by chance, uh, not by design, they turned out to provide a panoramic view of Dali from his earliest to his very last masterpiece, the Toreador. And how much is their current value? 
We estimate the current value is or something around $100 million. Just a picture from life's other side. Someone had fell by the way. The life has gone out with the tide. That may have been happy someday. And poor old mother at home. The Morses became Dali's principal patrons, often buying canvases hot off the easel they amassed a collection which now contains a quarter of his entire output of oil paintings. This uh, painting, Daddy Longlegs of the uh, Evening Hope, painted in 1940 when uh, Gala and Dolly were able to come to the United States during the war years. And this was the first painting that was painted here in America. This painting is a war painting. And as you see, we have winged victory.